Hi, I'm Matt Singh, the Director and Master Black Belt of the Center of Operational Excellence. Today, I'm honored to discuss how the Center of Operational Excellence added value to executives and team members across the state in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Whether it was lessons learned from bell training, visual management tools being used, morning huddles, or even the COE team helping key initiatives throughout the state, the COE has come in as a trusted partner to support team members through these trying times. We invite you to watch with us as we highlight a few examples of the COE collaboration throughout the state. My name is Jason Jackson. I'm the Director of the Department of Administrative Services. We oversee the back office business operations for state government. One of the strengths that administrative services has is that we have a core of expertise in operations management. But the pandemic challenged us in new and novel ways. One way it challenged us was with our contact tracing operation. Uh, basically, we had to stand up a 1,000 person strong uh, startup contact center operation to facilitate contact tracing throughout the state. Another novel challenge that the pandemic created was the need to set up supply and logistics for the distribution of PPE throughout the state. What administrative services did was we partnered with the Department of Health and Human Services, with the National Guard, and we leveraged our supply depot at Surplus Property uh, to basically distribute PPE to all the various public health districts around the state. So DHHS was uh, intimately involved with responding to the pandemic from the very first case in the state. Uh, I was I deployed out to help investigate and contain our very first case. And, and from there, the pandemic presented a roadblock after roadblock and new and new changes around every corner. DHHS response had to evolve each time the virus threw a new curveball at us. And, and two examples of that continuing improvement were testing and uh, case investigation contact tracing. I feel like uh, within the Department of Health and Human Services, particularly within public health, we were faced with a couple of things. Number one, we had a vacuum of data that really needed to be organized, but also we needed to get new and fresh data that we had never, uh, ever had to keep as a department. One of my first tasks, and I think probably my most important task th throughout the pandemic has been to maintain uh, hospital capacity and to be in contact with the hospitals and know what's available and when maybe things are getting tight or not available. And that wouldn't have been possible without our team uh, gathering the data that we needed to see how many people we had in the hospital, how many people within the hospital were COVID related, how many people were not COVID related, how the ICU capacity was. And uh, just so I could help give the governor's office confidence that we had enough hospital capacity to get through through the uh, surges that we've had. So the first thing that we did was we uh, pulled in some of the process improvement coordinators and had them start to map out our process for reporting. Um, that is sometimes a, a pretty tedious pro process, but it's really um, valuable because it helps both our team, um, it helps our team understand what are all the steps actually in this process? Where are there redundancies? Um, where are there steps that we are taking that aren't really adding any value? Um, where are places that we can streamline it? The second thing was really aligning our public health department to really be ready to do long-term work. I think we all thought that this might be a six month and then it went on forever. And so it was realigning our teammates so that our teammates could do the work and be very effective. SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, kept changing uh, and it began mutating. And that's when we needed to improve again. So as SARS-CoV-2 mutated, we needed more help with testing. We needed to begin sequencing. The other thing the COE helped with was set up calls with the associations and with our key stakeholders, the hospitals, the CEOs, the CMOs, and the other associations, so that we could keep in contact with them and communication, which to me was almost as important as looking at the numbers every day. I mean, we were just doing continual process improvement the entire time. So that's the biggest thing is making sure that we know that there's a product 
that we're, it's never going to be perfect the first time and that we're constantly evaluating the system and reformatting it to meet the demand of our customer. So we received over four years worth of unemployment insurance benefit claims in four months, at the same time trying to set up a remote workforce with no remote capabilities going into the pandemic. A lot of decisions have to be made on the spot. Uh, one of those decisions was that um, all the people that had uh, previous unemployment knowledge to be shifted to help uh, with the workload that on the unemployment division was experiencing. And the decisions that were made by uh, executives uh, affected um, the, the way that we uh, perform our duties and also affected um, the benefits that were going directly to the families. For us, our morning huddles were critical. Um, it, it kind of veered away from our, you know, QDIP board and focused more on, um, you know, rapid problem solving. Every member of our executive team had or was in the process of working on their executive green belt. And I think that truly made a huge difference in our rapid decision making process. We really didn't have time to come up with a deliberative response to such an overwhelming um, flood of unemployment claims coming in. We immediately started doing daily huddles with our executive leadership team. The previous training that we had had with the yellow belt and with the white belt, that was that helped us a lot um, to be able to keep offload um, everything that was going on at the time. So thanks to our process improvements and also thanks to all the decisions that were made by our executives and our governor, Pete Ricketts, uh, we were able to push uh, all the unemployment claims that uh, we received, which directly uh, helped uh, Nebraskans. The Center of Operational Excellence helped uh, our agency and I think all agencies throughout state government respond to the pandemic because as we encountered these novel challenges, we had some built-in capability for innovation, for rapid experimentation, and for really quick iteration and process improvement that absent the capability building from the COE and our process improvement coordinators throughout state government and our executive green belts and our green belts and just the capability that they had and the subject matter expertise that they had in those areas, we would have had a much harder time standing up these startup logistics and contact center operations. But because we had that capability, we could take risks, we could quickly implement, and trust that we had the ability to rapidly Im implement and iterate uh, upon lessons learned and really get an effective organization into the field as fast as possible.